Hello, welcome to SAS Global Forum 2020. My name is David Assermly, and I'll be presenting Telling Your Model Risk Story During COVID-19. In today's COVID-19 environment, the pressure on modeling activity has increased and things are moving quickly. Models are, models are the lifeblood of financial institutions. As a model risk manager, you realize that many of your historical data sets and critical models fail to represent the new reality. These changes reduce your ability to estimate critical business questions that impact your company's short-term profit and long-term viability, including liquidity, lending decisions, fraud management, etc. New and modified models, including advanced analytics and machine learning, must now be developed and deployed quickly. But with all the rigor and governance required by the stakeholders, including management, audit, and regulators. Firms that are able to quickly adjust and ensure their models are giving them the best possible results to inform strategic decisions will have a better chance of getting through this period and perhaps even strengthen their capabilities in the future. Models need to be trained and built using historical data. Of course, in the midst of this pandemic, we're seeing data that is unprecedented. Many of the models banks depend on to run their business are simply not going to, to provide the insights they need. This graph of US jobs claims is just one example. Others include the level of stimulus and collapse of entire sectors of the economy. Any institution that is unable to quickly adjust their models and introduce new modeling techniques to address these challenges is likely to be at a disadvantage. The first priority is to identify the models that are not performing and determine the best fix. This requires a full view and understanding of your model inventory as well as the data dependencies and interdependencies of all your models. From there, your teams can identify the most critical models for redesign and replacement. Of course, this is all taking place in an environment where IT budgets are restrained. However, IT model risk professionals are under a lot of pressure. We've learned from our clients that many expect model risk regulatory pressures to increase as we move through and emerge from this crisis. In a recent study by McKinsey, you can see the, the graphic from that study here, many model functions, including development, validation, and monitoring that were typically conducted quarterly or monthly are now taking place weekly. This forces the model lifecycle workflow to be condensed and accelerated, a requirement that is practically impossible without, without an enterprise-wide streamlined model governance framework in place. Some firms are, are, are currently forced to outsource model governance and validation activities. This only adds to an unstable, unsustainable level of cost. Another trend we are hearing about from our customers is the need to adapt advanced analytic techniques like machine learning. Since data going back 30 years is simply inadequate in this environment, machine learning often pr proved to be more effective finding patterns within very large amounts of current and alternative data sources. The, the challenge is to have an infrastructure, including model governance, that includes continuous monitoring and retraining and support getting machine learning models into production with sufficient transparency, explainability, and governance. Earlier this year, we did a survey with GARP. We asked people to, uh, we asked people what they're using to support model risk management. 
Over 30% said they were using SharePoint or generic operational risk tools. Surprisingly, this was even the case in some of the largest global banks. There are a number of significant challenges with this approach, all of which are amplified now. Understanding which models are the most critical, which are underperforming, what interdependencies exist across models, all this becomes very difficult to assess in, in a compressed time frame. This flowchart gives us a sense of the complex series of steps across a range of functions that have to take place for one model to be put into production, with hundreds or even thousands of models going through this process. With a sense of urgency and acceleration, things can get out of hand very quickly. Unless you have a comprehensive, integrated, and systematic approach that addresses business requirements and regulatory guidelines. Another requirement for a comprehensive model governance solution that addresses these needs is that it accommodates all of your modeling solutions, including open source and multi-vendor. An enterprise view can only be achieved if you are able to link to and aggregate data from all your modeling uh, systems across your organization. An integrated model risk management solution of this kind will also enable you to automate a number of steps in the, in the workflow across your multiple teams, from developers, testers, implementation, uh, implementers, and audit. One of the best tools we found to help management track these changes through the model lifecycle uh, is, is visualizations. Here is a visual analytics example from SAS Model Risk Manager. At a glance, we can see and track performance with this COVID-19 dashboard. These are the type of tools that, under, that help you understand which models are failing, which model, what models have faulty assumptions, what models are currently being used outside of tested limitations. It helps you track your economic forecasts and make sure that they are being applied and used by your models. And also help you track model overlays um, you know, and again, many of those are happening today. I want to thank you very much for joining me today. If you have any questions or would just like to talk model risk, please reach out to me directly. Thank you very much and stay safe.